what I asked Amber first um, to be on, and uh, thank you, I really appreciate it, grateful for you to be on. And then you said, you know, can, can Alona come with me? I want to get her on too. I, I want to know, what, and I said, oh, okay, well, sure. Why did you want that? Like, what was the, what was the reason? That's a good question. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Yes. I I love you. Um, It's a pleasure. Um, Because uh, a few reasons. So, um, Alona and I have been friends for 14 years. Okay. We're business partners. We fight like siblings. Um, We we hardly ever fight. It's usually me picking a fight. Um, And part of the reason why I pick a fight is I really am working a lot on my own growth, right? So, she will tell you that I've grown tremendously even in the last year. But it's something I'm always trying to do. I'm always trying to improve myself. But my model for improvement comes a lot from Alona. So, like, um, I've said this a few times, but I think it's important to put it on public record that one of the reasons that I push myself as hard as I do is because I want to keep Alona in my life. Like, Mm -hmm. you can't be in a partnership with someone that is growing at an exponential rate and keep and expect that relationship to keep growing. And she spends so much money on coaching on on developing herself her routines are so on point like and so living with her since april of this year you know i think has been one of the reasons why my growth has accelerated so much i was already meditating i was already exercising i was already doing a lot of this stuff yeah but i wasn't diving into it with both feet and so consistently and almost religiously as she has so um i really do feel like you know it she is like a practice like intimate partner for me in the way that like I want to keep running parallel with her okay in nice. life and in business is so important to me and so that means that I have to really push myself to be consistent and to to go more into my own mindfulness and my own routines because she leads with such example so just so, a good inspiration just to super you too. inspirational that's for awesome me. so mm-hmm. yeah oh my God. Oh, that's so <laughs> that's so true. wow it's true though it's you know so when you said a mindfulness podcast yeah uh, the other part of it is, is that I think so often people see me as front of the house of the business because I'm usually on a stage, but what they don't see is that the reason why the business runs the way it does is because of her. This is her third business uh, with me, not with me, it's her third business in general, mm-hmm. and uh, it runs because of her expertise. And also what people don't see is when I'm on stage speaking, my anchor point is Alona in the back of the room or sitting in the front row or wherever she is and as soon as i'm done i literally come to her first like how did we do how was it up there how you know and she's like my anchor point and i think a big part of the pressure of my business is people coming to me and saying oh amber i want to talk to you when they really need to talk to alone or they really need to talk to other people on my team because that's their skill set so big push of 2020 is us speaking together so here in in cancun where we're speaking now at cliff and patnam summit we're speaking for the first time together in front of a group. Last mm-hmm. week, we spoke for the first time together at our live event. And in 2020, we're going to kick off 2020 by keynoting Affiliate Summit West together. So it's going to be a big push for us. So it's another reason from a business perspective why I wanted her to be here. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. That's, that's great. It's yeah. nice to hear that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We can do this more often. <laughs> a l- Glad a l- it's a cordial trip. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm having a bad day. <laughs> this is just three plays. Just, yeah, just, you know, lots of plays on podcasts. Yell my ringtone. <laughs> like, it's a long ringtone. It's like, yeah. oh, wait. oh wait, guys, the call's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. I'm re-listening for the 50th time today. What you said about? Uh, so, so you, inspiration. How do you keep yourself um, inspired like that? How do you keep yourself on the daily habits? Well, first off, what do you do? What do you what what, what do you do for mindfulness? What, what are these ha- habits that you're consistently doing? Oh, it's it's interesting because I feel like at this point they're just my life. Yeah. They don't feel like just habits that I'm doing. Yeah. They're just kind of ingrained. And for me, um, it was five years ago when I went from this black and white box of rules of here's how life's supposed to be and stay away from my mindfulness because mindfulness is going to break all my rules. I mean, when you start entering mindfulness, it breaks your life. That's, yeah. that's, that is part of it because it washes away anything that's not serving you. So I was very much like, Mm-mm. no, you keep keep that away from me. I'm going to stay my rules. I get the rules. You know, you get do this and then you do this and then you get a house and then you get married. Totally get it. This. Huh? Um, and then I went through a divorce and for me, it was like, okay, let's just start over. And yeah, it was just diving in and every layer that I would, every conference I would go and get something out of, I would apply it and I would notice my life would get better. The quality of people would get better. I got a little bit happier. I got more control over my emotions. I got like, it just get better. So that became practice, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. So now I'm like, I 
if I don't do my morning meditation, if I don't go take care of my body, if I don't get my sleep, like I know the things I need. I know my needs, my boundaries at this point. If I yeah. don't get them, I feel off and I can immediately feel that energetic offness. I'm like, okay, oop, need to go. Well, how did you figure out what you needed? Like, how, how did you go through that yeah. process? And it was, it was just literally one thing at a time and starting from... You know, everybody talks about meditation. Meditate, meditate, meditate. Yeah. That's literally what I would hear for years. I'm like, meditate. That's so funny because I, yeah, that's, I, that's. And then for years also, I'd be like, yeah, I meditate. I close my eyes once in a while, like sit there. Right. <laughs> was, right. But it, really, that's just the most overused term. And you're just like, at this point, anybody who doesn't meditate regularly is just tuned out to it. You're like, I, I don't know what you want from me. I don't have time to sit there quietly. And my brain doesn't quiet. It's just. It's not for me, or it's not going to work, or right. whatever it is. Or it's a waste of time, right? But it's really... It's a waste yeah. of time. Where, I mean, I'll, I'll do it later. I don't have time for it. Man. I don't have time for it. I don't have time to learn it. I'm going to do it later. It's yeah. fine. Just, it's like culture and business. Just this thrown around word that nobody quite like understands unless you're doing unless it. Unless you're doing it. And yeah, for me, that was like a big thing is going through, and it really did start with meditation. It was trying different... It's reframing meditation to getting yourself out of flight and fight for a little bit, so you're nervous system can calm down uh -huh. and you can think clearly so it started for me from just breathing or visualization things that would quiet my nervous system and just moving through that and the more i meditated float tanks are easy because you're just trapped in a tank and you can't go anywhere so you have to force yourself that's to cool i've never done that before that's, oh, that's we love that. fantastic it's so painful do you like have one in your house so you just go down in the basement and start floating? <laughs> Uh, no, we we do have like uh, a float place that we go to cool. pretty regularly. Her more than me. Yeah. Um, but you know that is part of of the practice. Yeah, you're just you're in there and you're just listening to your breath. It's dark. You no, know, nothing else around. You the know, first couple times are painful. Yeah. Because you're just literally there with your thoughts. Well, right. I fall asleep in them, just like I fall asleep in the plane. So like, we're, which is totally you know, cool. We're having a totally works. different experience. So funny when I like, come out of float tank and I'm just like, yeah. Feeling great. She's like, "Whoa, that was that was a tough one." I'm like, "No, oh. I was just like the entire time." Like, well, see, that's so cool know? because yeah. different things work yeah. differently for everybody, and that's what people, right? That's what people have to figure out and understand. Yeah. When I talk to people about meditation, because I, I, you know, I'll throw it around a million times. I think it's so important. Yeah. It's not the waste of time. It's actually probably the most, the best time you can take for yourself mm -hmm. throughout the day, right? Mm -hmm. um, and everybody has it differently. Whether they want to do guided, whether they want to just do it on their own, whether they want to. Somebody was telling me that they they sit and like they put their head on the ground and meditate. I don't know. Yeah, like, who knows? You know. I fall asleep. <laughs> you fall no, asleep. I do. Either. Like I, I tend to fall asleep. Wow. Do you sit up then when you're doing it? Yeah. And you just fall. I sit up. Yeah. Fall. And I do guided. So like she cool. introduced me to the Joe Dispenza oh, so meditation, which has been just super amazing okay. for for both of us, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I've I've been meditating for like two years off cool. and on, um, and I started using Headspace. Yeah. You know, like yeah, the guys one. Yeah, yeah, and I've done pretty much every headspace one from patience to anger to resentment to the guided, like all, yeah. all the beginner, the, you know, I've done it all um, on there. And then she introduced me to Joe's. And what I love about Joe's, if you haven't tried it yet or your listeners haven't tried it yet, I, I highly recommend it. Um, I was so resistant to Joe because we're in this health and wellness influencer space. So like, yeah. it was funny, we both felt that way. We're like, oh, we see all the influencers, right? We work with them behind the scenes. There are lovely people, but half the times I don't take a lot of them seriously because we know that they're ma sometimes making things just to make money or they're doing whatever. I'm not talk shit. We love, ever we love the industry that we're in. But right. like, if you hear someone that keeps coming up, like Deepak, I was very resistant to Deepak. I was like, ah! This guy, yeah, right? The, the Oprah guru. endorses him. He's just like, you know, he's like the uh, he's like the Diplo of EDM, right? He's just smooth and just like whatever. And then we started listening to him and I was like, oh, this guy's amazing. Like, I love, and now I see why he's popular. And then so it opened us up to Joe and like what I love about Joe is his morning meditation is all about like really envisioning your future and okay. really sitting down and really concretely feeling like you're living as that person you want to become. And then the night one's really good because the night one helps you reflect on your day and places in your day that you didn't show up as your highest self. And to kind of recreate that day in a way that you wish it would have gone. And I think that's just such a powerful opening for your day and such a powerful close for your day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at first it's a little weird. Like he's sitting there talking about like, you know, pay attention to the space between your ears and then pay attention to the space around your neck. And the first time I heard it, I was like, this guy's a wackadoodle dude. Like, you know, I, like, don't, like, woo, 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 <laughs> you know? And then just like, it started having ripple effects in my actual day and yeah. in my life. 
and Alona mm-hmm. does even longer ones for Joe. Which one are you doing? It's like 45 minutes. It's 45 minutes, minutes but yeah. I think yeah, what Amber's saying is, brings up a really good point is to the original question of, you know, how, and I, I think a lot of the personal development things that people follow is very head-based. Yeah. So it's very, think different thoughts, just think happy, be happy, get, let it go. It's very heady. It's not a full body embodiment, or it's not a full embodiment of it. And somebody yeah. like Joe Dispenza, there's David Hawking, there's these people who teach you how to change that emotional state. And that to me is where mindfulness comes from. It's all Everything else comes from that because everything else is what makes you feel good. But yeah. you don't know what makes you feel good until you get into your body, until mm-hmm. you can actually calm yourself, feel it, feel your true self. Yeah. And there's not a lot of personal development people right now that are that. Like Joe Dispenza is one of them where he's just at a whole different frequency where you're like, whew, okay, yeah. you whatever you're doing, you're actually practicing it and I want to lead your way. And that was for me a big part of my practices finding coaches and mentors where I'm like, I don't know why I'm hiring you, but when I'm around you, you're obviously you're happier and more put together, more grounded, you're more elevated. I just want to be around your energy and yeah. just teach me whatever you know. So you said hiring coaches and mentors. You you mm-hmm. actually you guys actually have personal mentors that you hire that you work with on a weekly, monthly basis? Yeah, I it? mean she can tell you about like are you like Lawrence and like some other ones I can share yeah. some that we have currently, but who? Yeah, we, I mean, we, I, both of us believe in coaches for everything. I mean, every part of our lives. Yeah. Right? I've had a dating coach. I've had everything. Yeah. But it's one of them is mindfulness and just wow. personal development and life. It's almost life. It's like a life coach, not the traditional sense of. Is it I'm almost held you accountable? Is that kind of the, the big reason for it? Or is it also teaching uh, as well as accountability? It's I mean, what's gentler than that? I would say like only know. our business coach, I, I would say would kind of hold mm-hmm. us accountable, which is Chris Guerrero, who you should totally have. Yeah. I know, yeah. I'm in, but Chris. he's here and yeah. I'm sure he be on the podcast but he's you know he's grown eight he has four eight figure businesses one nine figure so he does hold yeah. us accountable but in in a in a very you know in a way that's in a way that's kind and our like for me you know i have a, a therapist that i work with yeah. um who i consider her to be a coach as a narrative therapist and she's she i wouldn't call her confrontational but she definitely is not one of those therapists where you're here's my day here's what i did you know oh amber it sounds like it's your traumas she's like I kind of heard you say this last week and you're just getting in these patterns and I think it's kind of bullshit and I really want to challenge you on what you're saying because you know you're getting into this this and so that really helps me I work with her we just hired like a well I just hired us uh, like a she's a how do you put her I joke and I call her a different a, a sexualized term but she you know I've had a lot of sexual trauma in my life okay um, I was sexually abused from a very young age Um, and, um, you know, it's led to significant intimacy issues and traumas trapped within the body. So she's a somatic sex coach that actually does hands on work with you, um, you know, to really help you get in body, to release the traumas that you're having in your body, which includes hands on, which most therapists can't do because they're not uh, somatic sex coaches. So we do that. Um, you know, you've worked with like a life coach. Yeah. Um, well, and again, I, I don't want to say the word life coach because I think life coach has this connotation of there's a ton of people who are running around whose lives are broken and mm. they're playing themselves as life coach. So the, I, it's the way I would say it's a life coach because for me, I have I've had that therapist that I've seen every week for six years now. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it's the same thing where she awesome. she keeps teaching me tools yeah. to function in the world, communication tools, like clear yeah. boundary, expressing, okay, pulling back. Uh, but they also have a coach and I call him a life coach and he's not, but the reason I call him a life coach is because he has a beautiful life. He has a beautiful <laughs> life. Yeah. And he does a gentle, it's a reframing. So he constantly is challenging and adjusting the lens I'm seeing the world through. He's like, okay, well, you're, here's what you're describing your experience as. Yeah. What if we look at it from this completely different lens? What if this was reality? And it's just, it's a reframe of my entire perspective. It's hard to even imagine because it's, it's I, situational. That, yeah. That's that's uh, that's so cool to hear because that's like, and that, like you said earlier that your, your therapist uh, pushing you to see things from a different perspective, yes. just like getting in there. Um, I, I can't believe, I'm like listening to you guys, I can't believe like how much you're doing and what you're doing to, um, you know, just better yourselves. And I'm sure it's, that creates impact on everybody around you, obviously. Um, it's so inspirational to hear and hear that. I have, I don't personally have um, somebody I go to to see. I have my, me and my wife do. Mm-hmm. We go just to stay on top of things, so be cl- clear. And we've been doing it for a year and a half or so now. 
Um, and it's been amazing, but she keeps trying to get me to get my own, but like she does too. I would, That's I would powerful. get your own. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, yeah. And I mean, I'm if you want mine, you can. She's a she's virtual. Oh, she's virtual. In Denver, yeah. Mm. And she specializes in working with entrepreneurs. So oh, okay. She's, That's rare. She's That's excellent. Yeah. And right I, in my alley. And I would say too, like I have found that I have done a much better job of being my own coach, where um, you know part of it was, uh, you know. I abused drugs from a very young age, 14, started doing drugs, was in a group home, had all this violence, trauma, all this stuff that I won't delve into too much, but I've had a lot of therapists from 13 on. And you think that you share a lot with them. You think that you're giving, you know, you're in your private space, you have HIPAA laws, you have all this stuff, so you think it's contained, and it is. Right. But uh, last year, um, I went to Peru and I did ayahuasca, and it was such a moving experience for me for so many reasons did three ceremonies and the first one um, was the most powerful and it was me talking to myself because there was no bullshit anymore I knew what was going on because I could not mask it or frame it to another person I knew what my intentions were in all of my actions and I knew why I was doing them um, and a perfect example is when the ayahuasca finally you know started working um, I remember sitting there and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a bad person, right? I'm a bad person. I've done really bad things. And myself was like, well, we're here for God knows how long, what, eight, 12 hours. Like, yeah. let's, let's talk about it. And I just went in, man. And I was like, when I was three years, you know, when I was five years old, I slammed Athena's hand in a door and I did it on purpose. And everyone thought I did it on accident, but I did it on purpose. And I listed every single thing, every email I never responded to, every text message I didn't respond to, every person that I cheated on. Or are, are these things that, I'm going to interrupt you, are these things that you already, did they come up like memories where you were never even really thought about? Or are these things that have always been holding on, you've been always holding on to that you started talking to yourself about? During both. The, both. It was both. There were some things I really had a lot of memory of and I like relentlessly lashed myself over. And there are right. things that the ayahuasca brought to my attention wow. that I hadn't quite been paying attention to that yeah. were running in the background. And then I, after hours, I sat there and I was like, okay, well, I'm exhausted, right? I, aren't I a bad person? And I'm talking to myself, right? And myself was like, well, we've been putting, you know, these jewels of shame in this bag. Let's open it and let's look at these jewels of shame that you've been putting in here and I opened it up and it was just trash. And I was like, what the fuck have I been carrying this trash around for like this whole time? You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like I didn't, I was hurting myself and I just left it there and I walked away from it and I felt so like relieved. And like, since then oh. I've really been challenging myself to like, when I'm starting to get in an ugly pattern, anxiety and behavior, what I'm noticing is a lot of times the anxiety is, is trapped in my body because I'm not moving. So moving and getting uh, out has really yeah. helped me. So it's a huge part of our, our daily routine is moving. Moving, yeah, and, that's great. And it's not even just because I want to look better. It's, and that's a byproduct. The, by, the result is I, when I'm feeling like this, it's because I really probably haven't moved in a day or two. And that's so you're out of your body and your head mostly. Yeah, and, and it's circulating yeah, anxiety, right? Yeah, and so yeah. that was part of it is me when I was doing the ayahuasca, I was like, oh man, like, a big part of all that's going on is that like I like I just need to be I need to love myself better clearly because I'm talking super negatively yeah. I need to be open to receiving more love from other people that are good to me I need to work on setting better boundaries because of loving to myself and to others yeah and not bullshitting myself anymore it yeah. was very hard to do on ayahuasca so it was a good thing and you know wow. we're microdosing I've been microdosing really regularly yeah. Um, which has helped me kind of get my baseline up. I haven't taken uh, antidepressants in eight years. Um, I took myself completely off of them. Not that I don't, I'm against antidepressants. Sure. Um, I'm against how they are. They work for me because I was given Haldol, Cymbalta, Lexapro, Paxil, Prozac, etc. from 13 to like 23. And they just didn't serve me, right? So You figured out yeah. other ways other to ways. Meditation, yourself. yoga, exercise, like... Um, you know, coaches. therapy, yeah. coaches. Yeah. Um, Can I go back to, um, it was beautifully, I love what you're sharing. I really appreciate the vulnerability yeah, course, that you're doing. Yeah. Honestly, like that's awesome. Yeah. And um, I want to go back to the word you said, jewels of shame. Yeah. Okay. Can you touch on that a little bit more? Because yeah. I, I think shame's a big thing. Um, there's a, a book uh, by Brene Brown that I read mm. um, called Daring Greatly. And she just talks about shame and what it is. And yeah. you read, you've read it? No, I want Oh, okay. It's yeah, really good. Um, 
So what do you mean by that? What do you mean by jewels of shame? What is that? That was how it came up for me in my, I wouldn't call it a vision because I didn't have what, I never in the three times I did ayahuasca did I ever have visions. I never saw, you know, colors or phoenixes. I never um, saw my mother's face. I didn't have that experience. I What I had was talk therapy to myself. And, yeah. and in that talk therapy, when I was walking through all the things, the one kind of thing that I would call a vision was when I looked inside of this bag and I had been thinking this whole time as I was talking everything that I was carrying was a, a jewel of shame that it was this beautiful dark uh, thing really... that I had to polish and transport because it was valuable like my shame was valuable right because if I wasn't shameful about it then I wasn't having pen like I wasn't repenting about it I wasn't sorry about it if I wasn't carrying it with me. You, yeah. And then I looked at it and I was like, it's just trash. Which uh, <laughs> is just, true, right? Yeah, you know, from a different yeah, perspective, it's, it's just, just, it's almost laughable. It's just, yeah, I, I laughed <laughs> and like, you know. I, I get it. I, I understand, yeah. Yeah, because I was sorry for it and yeah. I'm still sorry for it, but I don't need to keep carrying it with me and pulling it out and yeah. polishing it and yeah. carrying it on my back and dragging it with me emotionally. So the, There's this really cool meditation that I do that um, talks about like a vision of, of putting all that trash mm. in a boat. Like, you, you know, the whole, you start with going through a forest, you see a river and then it talks about your like, that kind of stuff, right? Your shame, oh, cool. your guilt. And then putting it in the boat and letting it float away. And then moving on. It. Yeah, it's really cool. It's, so it reminds me, you know, I'm obviously not as deep as you went through, but it's really cool that, that that's that's awesome. Well, I it helps, right? Yeah, and I, I do want to try to experience that someday. And Tim Ferriss is uh, somebody I listen to a lot of podcasts. He has a he just started a huge um, uh, company and funded to to try to make it more uh, legal in the U.S. and actually yeah, for, he, for stuff. yeah, they're doing a John Hopkins with him. Right yeah, now. yeah. There's a bunch of yeah, investors. and Maps is decriminalizing you know psychedelics in Denver and Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's cool. I'm so interesting. Yeah. Um, Alona, you um, what um, Amber beautifully shared stuff that she went through, mm -hmm. and we could do a whole podcast, I'm sure, on the on your history <laughs> and your life and and. And you know, every, everybody goes through different things, right? So you can definitely help people by sharing. So that's awesome that you do that. What like what did what made you? I know you said divorce was what was a situation. Um, was that like the event that kind of set you onto your your new journey of transformation, or was there other stuff that? Uh, yeah, the divorce yeah. was my my catalyst. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I moved here when I was ten. I was bullied, and it was just all this thing that. I, and that made me learn how to suppress emotions. You moved here from your time from Ukraine. Ukraine, okay. And it was just like severely bullied, and then one one abusive relationship to another, and you know, just like alcoholism and family. So it's all yeah. these things. And what I what I really learned from it is, as humans, we learn to when we learn to suppress the pain. And so many of us have gone through traumatic childhoods in whatever way, but it's the reality. And then, so, but when you're suppressing the pain, you also suppress the happiness. And that's the part that most people don't realize. So you learn, like I had a very high pain tolerance. I, the relationship was, I was really good for like two months and I was in it nine years. So I was like, okay, that's fine. This is just life. I can, I can handle this. I can suppress it. I you can seem, but just for the few times that we met and hung out, like I, I, you seem like someone that can like handle a lot. Like you handle a lot. Yeah, you yeah. do. You that's seem like Russian very high. Like, 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 you do. No have emotion. Fine. <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you have that hard edge. It's good. It's good. Got, it. <laughs> okay. Got it. Don't worry. Like, I'm something that you can, like, white hug somebody without them even seeing it. Like, <laughs> like don't mess with me, kind of thing. <laughs> I, used to, yeah. I used to wear that with pride. Yeah, that, sure, was okay. like, okay. that, that was like, that was a thing. That was like, well, and that was my childhood. That was my upbringing. Like, you know, yeah. I would cry. I would get grounded for crying. So I'm like, <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> if you're hurt, suck it up. But yeah, and, and so I had a very high pain tolerance. So I was just, what I, now looking back, I just kept inviting painful experiences in my life because I was allowing them. And I had a high pain tolerance, so I just kept numbing and I kept getting more better and better and better and numbing it and just stay in the box, numb the pain, numb the pain. But they had, so it had to get to the point where the pain was just to a point where I just, I couldn't, my brain, my logical brain could not rationalize staying in this pain anymore. Right. Like I had to get that bad. And once it got that bad, it just unleashed the whole thing. and unleashed everything. It was my catalyst because immediately as I started letting go some of the pain, I realized the positive coming in. 
And it's when you suppress a negative emotion, you're suppressing all positive. So you can't have a lot of joy in your life. You can't have happiness in your life if you know how to like suppress pain. You're living in that pain. Yeah. So it's just they go together. You can't isolate them. I always believed you could. So getting through a divorce was my final my catalyst. I'm like, okay, I have a lot of stuff to take out. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of garbage here. That seems and, heavy. Yeah. Well, it is. And I mean, it's taken me five years where I am. Yeah. I'm I in a much different place. I probably could use another five years. So we're we're always still, working, yeah. Since you're like still, I keep a handle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a balancing game. It's yeah. never, yeah, it's always working, but my range is so much better at this point. And yeah. my pain tolerance is much lower, which means I won't tolerate things as long. And my happiness is significantly higher. It's both yeah. at the same time. And you're able, and that's due to all these different. Yeah, it's, it's all. What, do you, what is something that in the daytime that you just say, I can't not do this? today do you have a whole list because some days we skip things right some days we i don't do. go to the gym some days i don't um read you know but bedtime is... bedtime for sure for me is the number oh. one thing oh, honestly nice. it's it's that to me if i don't get sleep which for me between 10 and 11 i have to go to sleep after that your circadian rhythm is off um, yeah. your body doesn't repair itself after like midnight it starts you start giving up things that are going to be repaired uh -huh. um, your hormones reset themselves between like 2 and 4 a.m so if I'm not in bed and asleep, I know tomorrow's gonna be an awful day. And that's a big part for me is I, I hate going to bed early. I get so much FOMO. I wanna stay up and watch TV. <laughs> People are like, so much fun. People have past 10 o'clock. Well, that's when I come alive. That's when everybody's having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done a lot of biohacking, but you're saying like you can't like you can't replace sleep. You can't, right? but you can't even like I, I've done. Like, I went like in a three month deep core dive of how do I hack sleep? Yeah. How can I minimize the amount of sleep I need since we need so much sleep? And at the end of all of that, I was like, oh, I have to go to sleep, and it has to be at a certain time. Like as humans, we have to be like after midnight, you're losing the quality. Okay. It has to be like midnight nice. to five. We need to be asleep. I mean, a little bit before and after is great yeah. too, but totally. like, we just need to be. Wow. Um, yeah, that's that's a huge one. Cool. But I love what Amber shared about um, ayahuasca because I know plant medicine is such a weird topic yeah. in general. Yeah, and it's, it comes up sporadically, but yeah, it is a weird topic. It, it is. People are either all for it or they're kind of looking at it as it's all drugs. Well, I mean the pills that you take, right? Like the Xanax yeah. and the and they're, they're all they're all drugs too. But, yeah. Um, you know, if you. If anyone like listening wants like kind of practical tips stuff that's less out there like to get into body like you know the, we touch on therapy and the coaches and all that stuff but we do cryo every day when we're home we you do what a cryotherapy okay every day when we're home so we're freezing our body at negative 220 every day for three minutes when we're home every day we do that um we swim in the ocean almost every single day like to really like feel the wow. earth and like get grounded we i do uh, we do the uh, is, it, is it the new tech? Is it what is it called? Uh, it's a new tech where it's like compression. So like it's compressing like, you know, our legs, our hips, our backs. Oh, Normatec. Like, our, Normatec, yeah. So it's like squeezing and cutting off blood flow uh, and then releasing, putting blood flow. And okay. we're doing saunas for like heat hormesis, right? So uh, like very high temperature saunas almost every day as well. Yeah. Um, to really, you know, detoxify the body. It's not the wow. sweat that's detoxifying the body. It's increasing the heat of your body, um, which is like really helping your body. Um, and it's helping with anti-aging and longevity and, and brain fog and all this other stuff. We get regular IVs. We get, you know, to, to get all your vitamins. We get regular vitamin B shots. We get vitamin B shots twice a week, right? Like if you want, if you want, <laughs> we do all the things. If you want, like, yeah, I guess. Like, if you okay. want to talk about, what do you want to talk about? Do you work? Like, do you know? We do. We like we're literally at the crowd place when it opens, right? But that's yeah. the other part is we don't we don't get on phone calls unless it's my clients from Singapore. I'm not on phone calls, and neither are we or any of our team before 10 a.m. Before 10? Ever. Do your... Just ever, because we want to be able to work out, and to do cryo, and to like swim, and to do all the shit. And yeah. to be fair, we do all of those things because we work so much. Yes. And because we're on one conference flight, next we have like usually one to two days to recharge in between. Yeah. So we've gotten really good at <laughs> how do we go from completely burnt out crash to on fire in yeah. two days. That's awesome. Yeah. I, well, I think exactly. that listening to you guys, like doing all that creates you to be so much more efficient mm -hmm. during the, so someone that just wakes up, uh, right when they get up, they brush their teeth, they shower, they're like, all right, I got to go into work. They go into work and they just start working mm -hmm. probably, and they work for, you know, 10 hours. You guys can probably do in five hours more efficiently than what someone that isn't, you know, practicing different things. No, not to say that you, they can't, but you get my point, right? So that's, 
That's really cool to hear. Brains can't go 10 hours straight either. Yeah. Yeah, you need your breaks, right? Yeah. Yeah. But like real breaks, not I'm going to just doze off over here. You need to go move your body or like a real break. I think last time I talked to you, um, like about a year ago or not even a year ago, um, you were talking about how you guys encouraged naps for your Oh, yeah. We love naps. Excuse that people are tired. Go take a nap. Yeah. I don't need you to sit here for four go hours being nap. being really tired. Oh, take interesting. Yeah. Well, we talk about the productivity. We're like, go yeah. have a cry if you're really sad. Go cry, please. Yeah. Like, I, we encourage crying and yeah. napping and all those things. Yeah. If your Great. human body needs are there, what are you gonna do? Sit there for Release. four hours and just half dial it in to work yeah. and take the day off. Like, you, our team knows. Like, like we're hard drivers. We're still a, a startup, so a lot, yeah. we're wearing many hats. Our team's wearing a lot of hats. Right. But our team is loyal and energized and excited because we are like bought into them. Like we had an employee that like ended up having um, like leaky gut issues, and we work with the best functional medicine doctors in the world. We're like go, I know your insurance doesn't pay for it. We'll pay for it, right? It's like we had someone had you know a, a child pass away, take three months off. You know, mm. had your mom pass away, take six months off. You know, we're yeah. they're gonna have a baby, take six months off paid time leave. Like we can create this. For compassionate that, environment compassionate kind of environment and for yeah. ourselves like i am the queen of taking a 20 minute nap in the middle of the day yeah. and like you know we're she's hacking her sleep i'm hacking my sleep like with an uller mattress cover like it helps me regulate my temperature during my sleep and the eye mask and the night meditation and you know waking up and it's like we, if you want to know our routine it's like we wake up we meditate mm-hmm. and then we go do cryo and then if we have time we'll do the infrared sauna and if we don't have time to do that then we're going to come back do our day do the infrared sauna work out and it might be midday or it might be right when we're done with work um and then you know it's like the evening meditation it's like the eating right it's it's coming down and ha- like having her there like i don't know how long we're gonna live together but the fortunate part is like hey i'm having a really shitty day today like i'm just like really overwhelmed I have no idea why i'm feeling like this yeah. and having her to talk to or having our coach to talk to or having our therapist to talk to and just like being vulnerable enough to be like just having a really shit day for no fucking reason i just don't feel good yeah. uh and then we start to filter through and it's like oh i didn't move today and i didn't move yesterday and i didn't get good sleep and i just need to take you know a nap i need to yeah. finish these calls and be done and i think that's just part of it is like coaching ourselves mm-hmm. and realizing what we need doing all the body stuff to stay in the body yeah doing the mind stuff totally. to feel clear and then having the support in the community around you. And like, I know some people might be listening and be like, I don't have all this money to do cryo and like <laughs> shots and all that other stuff. Yeah. That is absolutely true. But you can meditate and you can move your body. Meditation's free, walk. movement's yes, free. Yes, you can do yeah. so much. You can, you know, you can fill your bathtub with ice. Exercise and, is and free. Yes. Yeah, it's a, cold yes. showers, I'm a huge, cold showers. Like yes, that's my, that's my cryo right now showers. because I don't like yes. have, have the ability to go right now. But yeah, cold showers. I start with a little bit of warm quickly yeah. and then I just blast it as cold as it can go for yeah. like four or five Oh, I minutes. take like seven yeah. showers a day. And honestly, oh. it, it's funny because I know whoever's like, You must be really clean. Whenever someone goes out, it's like, what, what are you doing? It's just a hot <laughs> cork. Yeah. But it's it's actually it resets my mind every time I go in. Uh, and it's a cold shower. Sometimes yeah. it's a hot shower depending on what my body needs. Yeah, right. But so every like, shower, I mean, it's like three minutes. And I just get cool. in and I'm like, I get to cleanse away what just happened. It's start the day over again. And That's I get awesome. to do like seven times in a day. I don't think yeah. you even know that. I just, yeah. I'm just like, no, I keep wondering like, why you come out so much with your hair wet. <laughs> She just loves yeah. doing this with her hair. With it. <laughs> like, like, like just, the ends of her hair are like wet. Like, but you know what it's called? Like, like, again, it's the same thing. It's if you don't have time or like financial resources or whatever it is, there's so many different ways. It's, yeah. just, it's changing the state of your body. But yeah. I think the conversation we had before when you were like, I encourage an app. So the way they came up is so many people sit there and talk about how tired they are, right? That's the most company cultures. People show up to work, I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. That's a cultural thing. Sure. But you're just programmed to even say, sometimes you're not even tired. You're just programmed to say that because you're bored, you're disinterested. Yeah, you're You're not moving. You're not moving, you're, whatever your reason is, you're just frustrated, you're just, I'm so tired, I need more coffee. That's like this conditional program, I'm so, you just hear it every company, every day, Um, for me, that was also part of breaking that because everybody would come i'm so tired yeah if your feedback is go take a nap it's amazing how quickly people start like oh do i actually need a nap no okay uh, i'm not that tired no no i'm not i'm not yeah but they're not too tired to binge watch they're not too tired to you know do right like, it's such a conditional it's, it's a conditioning. yeah it's you know and that's part of like 
training and coaching yourself too. It's like, absolutely. You know, am I tired or am I overwhelmed because I have four emails that I really need to send out and I haven't been yeah. and it's in the back of my mind right. or maybe I'm going through a breakup or maybe I'm really worried about my dog like I am right now who's sick, um, right? You know, and I like going on stage and I'm compartmentalizing. Am I tired? No, I'm actually not tired. I got a lot of rest last night. It's just like coaching yourself through it. It's, it's you learning how to be your own best friend. I think we keep looking outwardly for best friends and like certainly I'm very lucky to have you as my best yeah, friend. Yeah, I keep seeing that comment throughout. Like, yeah, you, know, like you, you guys like, have, this, yeah. yeah, it's important to have somebody around you that's going through the same thing or similar yes. thing that you guys are growing like to talk space. to, bounce stuff off yes. of. Hold that's space. Hold, what they can hold space for Hold you. space for you. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's And hold really space good. for yourself. Yeah. You know, there's no one's going to hold you more accountable than you. Right. And really just like, you know, going through and I encourage everyone to have like a checklist. Like my checklist has changed, but like a checklist, it's like, here are the things that I need to do to feel better, especially as someone who struggled with depression, anxiety their whole life. Yeah. I need to move. I need to do the, right? Just, yeah. and then if I'm not feeling well, it's like looking at it. And if all those boxes are checked off, it's usually something else. It's usually something in my personal, my work life that's like looming that I'm not addressing. Mm. Yeah. yeah for, I think a lot of, I think that's a really good point. I think, um, what you went there is a lot of people look outside first for things that are happening outside for that during that time instead of just coming inside of themselves taking some checklists on what's happening with themselves and how they're feeling and why they're reacting you know um and by the way i hope your dog gets better is he old is that he's part? feeding i'm sorry right now, but yeah i think he'll be good he's a plucky little i know yeah. yeah hopefully he's better like i know you can yeah. get a good bond with your dog. <laughs> yeah. You're talking to somebody the other day, like they, it's unconditional love from your dog. Yeah. Like no matter what they're feeling, no matter what happened, they just love you no matter what. And I think a lot of people, humans can learn from that. Yeah, right? it was my first yeah. secure attachment. I call him my first born uh, first son, right? Like it's been there makes for total sense. It's everything. Yeah. So, and I'll be there for him. You know, I'm here in Cancun, but like when we come home, like, uh -huh. and when I'm home, it's like, he's my priority. It's just like, she's my priority, my team priority, your priority. Yeah. Cause you know, yeah. we're here. Well, can I, I want to tell you how much, what's your time looking like here? I have like, honestly, probably two or three minutes. Okay. To well, I, wanted, I wanted to yeah. tell you, uh, um, that, uh, Mimosa Mastermind. So, uh, Amber runs Mimosa Mastermind too, that I went to last year for the first time. And, um, do you have some plan? Do you have, do you do a lot of stuff behind the scenes for that too? Or no, you're not really involved. Okay. just my VIP. VIP. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure, but so, um, I wanted to bring that up because, and I've said it to you before, sort of, but I wanted to say that like, I'm so grateful that you put that together. And I know you've impacted a lot of lives, but before I came there, um, I, I had, I didn't realize I had a lot of stuff going on. I've been, like you guys have been doing for the past year, I've been going through a lot of transformational stuff, but the kickoff was Mimosa Mastermind. And I didn't even expect that, right? I had no idea what to expect going to this. And before that, I had like this, um, uh, where I was blocking and pushing away girly emotions, mm -hmm. you know, like that people would call, yeah, and like not allowing myself to be vulnerable because I were, and, and those emotions made me feel vulnerable, which I thought like guys weren't allowed to do. Um, and so I was basically like happy and anger are my two emotions that I've, I had for my whole life and never really allowed myself to be sad, never allowed myself to like love, like accept love from people. I mean, like if they did, I'd feel icky and weird and be like, all right, dude, I get it. You like me, like whatever, all right, move on. Um, but what I saw there was like, so you guys have a community of just, how can I help you? Give me, give me a, like bring it in for a hug, not like a high five all the time, but like hugs and guys hugging and you know, it's just it, the, and the love that was there, you could feel it and see it. And I was like, whoa, holy cow, I've never seen this much in one area. I'm like, oh, it's okay to, to let yourself open up a little bit. It's okay to actually have some emotions and allow like love in and be a little vulnerable and things like that. So I just want to say thank you. That was a kick. That was the absolute, honest to God truth, kick off to like me changing, big reason why the podcast is, is happening um, and everything. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. It means yeah, a lot. Cause it's, honestly. it's uh, like my heart in an event. Like I think it's, you know, it, I love live events for that reason. We just yeah. finished one and like it, it's me. I think part of it is as a child, I didn't have a lot of like love, you know? And so when I had my friends are my family and like things have come full circle, like at my event, you'll see my family is there. Yes. They're going to be, my two sisters are going to be there this year for the first time. Yeah, I always bring my grandma, my mom, you know, it's a big thing to bring my mom. Um, and I'm bringing her new husband who I call new dad and you know, my aunt, my aunt, and my grandma really raised me in a huge way. And, 
um, you know, it's, I'm glad that you can sense that because it's so important to me yeah. to connect and to bring people in and like you don't know what effects you have on people when I met you I was like look at this happy go lucky guy just love him you know like such yeah. a cool dude and like we didn't know what you had underneath that you were right. you know like Alona was talking about like you were suppressing your full range of emotion like, yeah. I'm so delighted that you're allowing yourself to express that and I hope that you know that as we start to do that um, and it might not be for you it might be for people listening when you start to express your full range of emotion sometimes it feels like that Miley Cyrus song like, I came in like a wrecking ball you know you're just like you're coming in and just like destroying it's right? weird and then you're it's... gonna find that middle so yep. just keep finding that yep. range of emotions yep. and know that you know that's going to be part of it and eventually it's going to even out. it's so cool finding that even i can tell it's even you know it's been only been like nine ten months or something like that so it's been crazy my even my, my wife i won't go any much longer but yeah. she's like i didn't recognize you we if you listen we had a podcast about yeah, I, wanna listen. I don't know i don't know if it was on this episode but or the next one coming up with us but um, anyway, she didn't recognize me. She's like, I don't know if this is authentic. I don't know if this is real. I don't know. So it was a big, and we had a lot of like a lot of this happening. And then now we've broken over on the other side. We find that we found the the happy mediums and Jeez. stuff. It's awesome. It's such a good feeling. Like I highly I recommend anybody to go through that. Like you guys have, yeah. I have. It's and you're still constantly always working yeah, on it, right? So that's that's what's cool. Is it's a never ending thing that's yeah. what's awesome I'm, about it i'm so grateful that it came from Mimosa. Thank it did yeah, 100, 100, yeah so, so i love you thank you so much for that like <laughs> honestly i'm so pleased oh that's and, so special yes. to me thank, and thank you. you for bringing alona of course yeah, i'd love to offer one more reframe on this with this one one minute yeah okay yeah, and the reframe is that's helped me a lot of just staying on the path because it is some, it is hard. It's not easy. Like none of this work is easy. Yeah. And I mean, even I'm right now, I was talking. I'm like, wow. If you if I had this listened to this five years ago, <laughs> <What a trigger. laughs> these people are insane. Who has time for that? What the heck? No. You just think... go. I'm gonna go to bed. Now. <laughs> But I'm glad you're telling it's the truth, right? It's the truth. You're not. No, I mean, listen to us right now, and we're insane. What are we doing? We're not. It's insane but, not to. But yes. the so reframe yes. I had that was like really powerful for me is every time you grow, your frequency goes up. And everybody in your in your surrounding environment benefits from that. Especially if you're in a leadership position, your team benefits directly from you they don't have access to a lot of stuff they genuinely don't have the time or the resources or just access to it so the more you can grow the more you're giving to your team that takes it to their families yeah the more you're bringing to your family it's actually it's almost like an obligation once you're aware that you can do that mm -hmm. it's really selfish not to and yeah, it becomes an obligation where you're like growing and you that. keep bringing it back to the team and there you're you're seeing their them grow and you're like okay i, I gotta keep doing this because you're benefiting so many people so yeah. you know and you got that benefit from mimosa but now you're benefiting your family yeah. and any of your employees and your partners are now experiencing and in a different friends. way and your yeah. friends like yeah. they're all growing because you're growing and it's just yeah, yeah. it was yeah that's that's all yeah beautiful that's said yeah. awesome so thank you guys i feel like we need to come on again i know let's we'll do, we're do more do it again. Yes, I love to. if people aren't scared away by all the weird stuff that we do there's yeah. more there's so much more <laughs>